My distinct pleasure to welcome to the podium our speaker this morning, Mr. Clive Edwards, who is no stranger to the temple and is no stranger to public speaking and is no stranger to truth. He will bring ideas to excite and uplift and inspire. Please help me welcome Clive. I don't know about the commercial. <laughs> Good morning, all. <clears throat> I certainly want to join with Carol and Sandra <clears throat> in welcoming you this morning and to certainly thank Carol for so warmly and lovingly guiding the service to date and to Sandra for her excellent consciousness raising guided meditation. It's a beautiful morning in Jamaica. It's a beautiful weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. We have had a fine tradition of the labor movement in this country. Um, played a very important role in us seeking and attaining our independence, led by some visionary national heroes, Norman Manley and Alexander Bustamante. So it is good that we continue to celebrate that tradition and that experience. I do sincerely hope that the words that I'm speaking and that the thoughts that guide these words are favorable to God our Father. On these occasions, you know, when I've been given the privilege of sharing ideas from the podium, I'm always pretty relaxed about it. I always enter a period of quietness around the task. I know that I'm going to be guided very clearly and directly to the ideas that I should share with my, my friends here. And it is no different in this case. The messages coming at, coming at me consistently were saying, speak about children. Speak about children. For one, we were now coming to the end of child month. And so many groups and so many individuals are speaking out in varying degrees of animation about the issues of Jamaican children. And yet I resisted. As I resisted, I remembered my participation in a government mission to Brazil last May. It was sponsored by UNICEF. It was designed in the context of local government, since in Brazil it is local government which is responsible for child protection. And I also remember the various post-mission discussions and action plans that we were involved in, and plans being developed for further cooperation with Brazil in this matter. And yet I still resisted. And then I identify the reason for my resistance. The media has been dominated in recent months, maybe a couple of years, of strong statements, strong stories, strong opinions on the issue of child abuse in Jamaica. And so as a truth student, I was somehow reluctant to discuss the issue. Issue that has been presented in such stark and emotional terms. How do we in fact discuss this context of child abuse and the principles of truth? Are all these incidents that are being reported not facts? How can the things that we have been hearing and seeing be filtered through the lens of a spiritual experience. I had to do some real digging. And I had to be honest in responding to the challenge that this presented to me. And I reread my Signs of Mind text. There's a section that reminds us of the words of Jesus the Master. Judge not according 
to appearances. Judge not according to appearances. And it further proceeded to guide us in reminding us that it's not what we see that counts. It's the way that we look at what we see. It's not what we hear that counts. It's the way that we look at what we hear. That's what counts. It is the conclusions that we draw and the actions that we take over what we see and hear. And so we sometimes see these conditions of our children approached with fear. We sometimes see them approached with anger. We sometimes see them approached with hopelessness. Sometimes we see them approached with horror. But that's not what we have to hold. We see it, we hear it, but that's not how we're going to deal with it. Because none of those views are compatible with the principles of truth. Regardless of what we are aware of on the physical plane, we can view our current situation as an opportunity to shine lights in places of darkness that needs to be seen and which cannot survive itself under the glare of light. I had earlier spoken of Brazil. This beautiful country had a history of military rule between 1964 and 1984. And during this period, Brazilians don't look, don't, do not look back on this period as a great period of, in their history. There was a measure of economic gain. There certainly was a great degree of wealth being accumulated by certain classes. But inequity grew and poverty grew. And there was this phenomenon, which you probably are aware of, of the street children of Rio. And there was evidence that these children were being removed physically from this plane of existence by the military police. And so they started gathering into the churches because they felt safe in the churches because Brazil has a strong Catholic history and the church has a strong influence. And one night, the largest, one of the largest churches in Rio was burnt down by the military police to deal with these street kids. And at that point, the Catholic Church came off the sidelines and took an active position on human rights and children's rights. So the Brazilian best practice model today that people from all over the world go to Brazil to observe and to adapt in their respective countries has arisen from this dark place in 1964-84. So out of all these situations come opportunities. It's not what you see. It's how you look at what you see and how you plan to do something about it. And if we turn to Matthew 18, verses 1 to 3, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, "Who?" is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus called a little child unto him and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So a good starting point for us this morning to meet at is that knowledge right where we are. That we are children of God. Supported, loved, guided, and protected by our divine Father. We truly inherit everything of God through divine inheritance. God is love and we too 
our love. God is wholeness and so are we. God is absolute abundance and that is our nature as well. Whatever God is, we are a part of because we are a part of God. And any attribute of God must automatically reflect itself in each of us. How could it be otherwise? How could it be otherwise? It cannot be otherwise. So what we're called to do as children of God in Jamaica today is to see this truth. To see this truth in as vital a way as we possibly can. As we see, relate to, come in contact with, engage with all other children of God, the adult children of God, the little children of God, all children of God, what are we called to do? How are we called to act? How are we called to think? And how are we called to mediate? I believe that each and every one of us is individually and collectively called to act at this point in the history of our beautiful nation. We must demonstrate like we have never demonstrated before our kinship with every child of God in this nation. Why? Because in the physical sense, every child has a wide and varied relationship with a whole range of adults. Parents, teachers, coaches, siblings, neighbors, relatives of all types, and strangers. And so we relate to all these folks in conscious and elevated ways. We're impacting our children. Whole adults create whole children. There's nothing wrong with the programs being developed and implemented which are targeted for children. As a matter of fact, they are critical and they are beneficial. However, we cannot fix the children's environment without fixing the whole environment. We can't fix the children without fixing everything else. I remember my father being a principal in one of the, in his younger days, the principal in a school in St. Elizabeth. And one of his hobbies was collecting all kinds of beautiful floral bottles and cutting them into decorative glasses. And I remember hearing a scream one day and he got burnt. And he spent several weeks in Blackwell Hospital. And I remember a teacher from an adjoining district having to drive my mom and ourselves to visit him. And on one of these trips, those of you who go to that side of the island, there's a long, beautiful stretch of road entering Black River. And there was a lady walking with a child, and he bolted from her and ran across the road and took all the skills of Mr. Coke to avoid hitting down this child. <coughs> And after he got the car under control, he parked it and he stopped and he said to my mother, Doris, do you have a, a hand brush in the, hairbrush in the car? She gave him the hairbrush. He got out of the car and he took the little boy from the mother and gave him several slaps on his bottom. And apparently he was well known in the area because the mother said, thank you, teacher. And when him go home, him father go and give him another one too. I say this to tell you that we all have a responsibility to deal and share with this idea of our children. And as true students, we have an opportunity to focus on the whole. Because we focus on the whole, we uplift everything, including the children. So I want to encourage us, in the context of our children, and in the context of the future of our country, to really live this idea of common heritage from today on in a much more focused way than we have ever done before. 
every individual we engage with, engage with them as a child of God. Engage with them, engage with them in a fashion that you're sharing with a member of the royal household of which you are a part. Engage with respect, with love, and recognition that we share all this lineage of great divinity. And express this unceasingly and indiscriminately. Because believe it or not, every act of beauty, every act of love, every act of kindness, every act of compassion on this plane of existence that we give to another human being in some way will be truly a gift to our children. Thank you. Thank you.